Hey guys, it's Rob, and thanks for tuning in. So we've just finished um, the Halloween season, and then we have um, Vet Remembrance Day in Canada, and I think it's like Veterans Day in the States, or Memorial Day. I always forget which one. I think, I think this one's Veterans Day. If you're an American and you're watching this, you can correct me in the comments there, but I'm pretty sure it's Veterans Day. And then we have Christmas, so like this has got to be one of like my favorite times of the year for at least holidays, that little corridor, because you go from like October, November, December, and you have like Thanksgiving and Halloween and Christmas and all that sort of thing. Another thing that's mixed up all in there and often forgot about is uh, Guy Fox Day. Now, that's much more of an English thing. That's the 5th of November. Um, on Guy Fox Day, they kind of commemorate the failure of Guy Fox and ultimately the Catholic um, people who had employed him to blow up the parliaments, and it's kind of become one of those uh, things that was originally a religious sort of conflict type thing, and now it's just become kind of a day to celebrate the blow up stuff. It's almost become like the Halloween for um, people in England. But one of the reasons why I brought that up is that the 5th of November was a couple uh, nights ago, and I have a tradition. I've been doing this for at least five years now, and it is to watch uh, this movie. Well, this is the graphic novel, but to watch the movie V for Vendetta. And I watched it again this year for like the dozenth, dozenth time. Dozens of times, it seems like I've seen that movie. And one thing that uh, I, I noticed this before, but I never really talked about it before, uh, V's speech near the beginning of the movie where he um, says, you know, voila, in view of a humble Vaudevarian veteran cast most vicariously, blah, 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 blah. Besides using a whole lot of Vs, it's very interesting because it has a very Shakespeare feel to it. Um, if you're familiar with a lot of Shakespeare plays, he'll do this at the beginning of his plays, but also sometimes at the end as well. He'll give you a, a little summary of what's going to happen in the play itself, the characters. And V does that in his speech. He talks about the vengeance and, and, and the verdict and, and all these sort of things. And he goes through that. And I thought that was a very um, very kind of Shakespeare-esque feel to it, which, of course, Shakespeare is a theme within that movie because uh, there's Macbeth quoted. Uh, I want to say Twelfth Night is also quoted. So that is very interesting. Um, in case you don't know, it's definitely one of my favorite movies. I mean, I know there's the issue with um, Alan Moore. In the credits, they just mention um, David Lloyd, who did the art, sorry, and not Alan Moore, who, of course, did the writing. Alan Moore's not a big fan of Hollywood and, and the um, what they've done to his movies. This one, i got to admit, was one of the ones that really pissed him off, too, because it's significantly different than the graphic novel. Uh, for example, Inspector Finch, in this graphic novel... Uh, does some drugs and gets pretty high and tries to use them to figure things out. They've mixed things up, changed things quite a bit. Sure, the basic characters are there. Some of the basic ideas about a repressive government and, and someone trying to free uh, free from that are there. But it's definitely different. So I would say that if you've seen the movie but you've never read the graphic novel, definitely go and read the graphic novel. However, I warn you, it may even be more adult-themed than the movie. <laughs> That's kind of saying something. So, yeah, keep that in mind there, though. But, yeah, there's those were a couple of interesting points about the Vendetta that I thought I would share. All right, I have not done a question question, which I can do on, like, the little website poll thing in a month, maybe. Last week we talked about like what we were wearing for Halloween, but that's not really a question you can vote on. So what I want to talk about is, I want to talk about when you're playing a video game, so this might be a console game, this might be something on PC that you're playing online with other people, maybe it's just something even on your iPhone or your PS Vita or whatever. Do you like it when a game company is constantly updating. They're adding new characters. They're tweaking the balance of the game. They're adding new items. They're doing all that sort of stuff. Or do you prefer when a company kind of maybe releases a, releases a patch for it like once every two months? That way you can kind of get um, used to the flow of the game and how it goes. And there's not always constant little changes. I mean, a prime example of, of something like this is League of Legends. I mean, they constantly update. Every, it seems like every single week there's a new patch, or at least certainly every two weeks it tweaks things, they add new characters, do that, do that sort of thing. And of course there are other games where they're, you know, it goes out and it's pretty much its original state, maybe you get two or three patches, and there's the game you have almost no patches for the rest of its uh, game time. So let me know in the comments section or, you know, click on the little spot on the blog to vote for that. And until I talk to you next week, so say we all.